Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily, I am a nutritionist and medical herbalist, and today we are going to talk about dandelion. Here, this is a series that I like to call Backyard Medicine, where we talk about easy to find uh, weeds, probably if you would call them, that grow easily all over the world. Please hit that subscribe button, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. There are a couple other videos in this series as well. I will link them in the description box down below, but we've already talked about chickweed and plantain. So go check those videos out if you want to learn about more weeds that grow easily in your backyard. So when I talk about medicinal weeds, um, dandelion is the one that people give me the hardest time about. Like, really? Are we really going to talk about dandelion? Everybody knows it or thinks they know it and most people hate it if we're honest, right? Like uh, it's not one of those plants that people get excited about and my goal with this video is that by the end of it you will be walking around your neighborhood and being like, oh my god, look at that beautiful dandelion. So that's the plan. So to get started, we're going to talk a little bit about the identification of dandelion and we're going to go outside and look at some in a minute. And this is a plant that I feel like everybody thinks that they know, but there actually are quite a lot of plants that are dandelion-like that are not dandelion. And the key identifying feature with dandelion, there's a couple big things. So one, the name gives us a bit of a hint, right? So dandelion is, um, we think it's translated from the French dent de lion, which means the tooth of the lion. And that is about the shape of the leaves, right? So we all know that dandelion has those kind of toothed leaves. So that's a key identifying feature of dandelion. If you see a plant that you think is dandelion, but it doesn't have sort of toothed leaves, then it's not dandelion. The other big feature with dandelion is that there's only ever one flower per shoot per stem. So dandelion has, you know, a very round stem, it's hollow inside, it has that kind of milky white sap in it, and there's only ever one flower. And there are quite a few other plants around that have flowers similar to dandelion, but they'll have like a few different shoots sticking out. So that is a very important um, identifying feature with dandelion. Okay guys, so here is our dandelion and who films a video about dandelion in the fall? Me, that's who. None of them are flowering, but we can still look at the identification. So uh, the main thing, like I said, is we have these really toothed leaves, right? So jagged teeth of the lion, dent de lion teeth, um, and there is one central stem that comes up and then little tiny stems that sort of branch out from there. You can see that. And that's important. If you watched my video on plantain, which will be linked down below, um, plantain has a very different stem um, sort of picture. It has parallel veins that go all the way up, whereas dandelion has the one central one and it branches out from there. Um, it grows in what we call like a rosette sort of form. So it like grows up from the center and then all the leaves grow all the way around as you can see there. And oh look, oh, there's like one sad dead um, <laughs> stem over here. But so dandelion when it flowers, which is obviously not right now in the dead of autumn, um, has you know, these hollow round stems and only ever one flower, this is the sad dead flower, per stem. So other ones, like I said, will have other flowers that stick out from the same stem and that never is the case with dandelion. Only just one. And as you know, that flower is usually fluffy and yellow and doesn't look like this when it's flowering. Um, the flowers also open in the morning in the sunshine and close in the evenings, which is another kind of nice identifying feature. Um, but yeah, that's your dandelion, the tooth of the lion. Hey there, Emily from the future here, and I just wanted to show you a plant that looks like dandelion flowers, but is decidedly not. This one has a bee on it, isn't it lovely? So you can see that this flower looks a lot like dandelion and even the leaves are toothed like dandelion. This one has prickles on the outside though, and the main thing is there is the dandelion, or the flowers on this sit right against it, and there is more than one flower on the stem. So that is, like I said, that key identifying feature 
uh, that dandelion only ever has one flower per stem. There you go, great example. Okay, so now that we've had a look at dandelion and we've got our identification down pat, let's talk about the medicinal use. So dandelion is a cool plant because you can use the entire thing. It's all edible or medicinal. Um, the young leaves in the spring are a really nice, you can just add them as a salad green so they can be eaten. So dandelion is one of those plants that sort of bridges that gap between food and medicine, which I think is a really cool place to play. Um, so yeah, you can just eat the leaves. They're kind of like a bitter green. Anything that's like a little bit bitter, uh, food or medicine helps to stimulate and support our digestive function. So when you eat something bitter, when you have a bitter taste in your mouth, it starts what we call the cephalic phase of digestion. And what that means is what, think about when you have something sour, think about eating a lemon, um, think about picture like squeezing a lemon into a glass of water and having that first sip. And what happens when you are imagining these things? Your mouth starts to water, right? And that saliva actually contains a millions of tiny little enzymes that start the process of digestion and actually tell your body to get ready for food. So the same thing happens when we have bitter foods, but to a much stronger extent. So bitters are a brilliant, brilliant way to sort of support healthy digestive function. So that's what you can do with the leaves. Um, you can also dry the leaves and have tea. Uh, dandelion leaves are mildly diuretic, so they help to support uh, the kidneys and urinary tract to like in their normal function. Um, the nice thing about dandelion, and this is kind of like a little thing that happens a lot with plant medicine, is um, it's really balanced out. So plants are never just like one chemical, right? They are a sophisticated and complex bunch of chemicals. And um, what happens oftentimes, so if people have a pharmaceutical diuretic, it can, it can leach their potassium levels out as well. And so they're often having to supplement with potassium or they get a diuretic that's called a potassium sparing diuretic. Dandelion acts as a mild diuretic and naturally contains high levels of potassium. So it's this really cool thing that like it balances out all by itself. So that's just like one reason to love dandelion is it has like automatically balanced itself out to support our own health. So yes, you can dry the leaves and have them as a tea, which would support um, digestive function because of their slightly bitter uh, taste and also urinary and kidney function because of their mild diuretic action and because they contain uh, potassium as well as other minerals they're also just like kind of full of nutrients so it's like having a salad green so that is the leaves um, the leaves are best picked early in the spring so I'm filming this in September it's definitely not the best time to be doing dandelion leaves although we're going to talk about root in a second um, but if you happen to be in the southern hemisphere right now like my pals in New Zealand then your dandelion leaves are just right for picking right now so get out there and add them to your salad they're a free green so yeah, you want to pick them early-ish in the spring. Once you wait too late in the season, they just get really, really bitter. They're still useful, but they're just like kind of unpalatable at that stage, at least for a salad green. Um, with the roots though, so the roots you can either harvest early, early in the spring or in the fall, in the autumn time. And the reason for that is like all root crops, you want to wait until kind of the energy has left the green and flowering parts and the top parts of the plant and gone back into the roots. And so, yeah, autumn is a really good time to dig up your root vegetables. You know, this is when you're gonna be harvesting potatoes and carrots and things like that. And it's also when you're gonna harvest your dandelion roots. So dandelion root is also bitter. It um, contains a prebiotic called inulin, which is the food for good bacteria. And you can get that food for good bacteria in our bodies from lots of plant foods, but inulin is a particularly potent source. So it's another reason that it's good for digestion is that it feeds the good bacteria in your gut. Uh, it also is a little bit bitter. To prepare dandelion root, um, you're gonna clean it because it's gonna be all covered in dirt and give it a good wash, chop it up fine, and then you can either make a decoction, which is basically a tea that you sort of simmer on the stove for 10 to 15 minutes at a minimum. And that's just because when it's a root, 
it just like takes a little bit more energy to get all those goodies out of the plant as opposed to you know a delicate leaf which you can just kind of pour hot water on and that's the end of your that's the end of the story so dandelion root like I said is good for um, digestion it's good for that good bacteria um, also a little bit bitter so just supports healthy digestion at the best of times you'll want to dry it if you want to keep it for a long time um, and to dry herbs really like roots you're just putting them you know one sort of layer thick on a piece of cardboard or a bit of screen it doesn't need to be high tech it can be super super simple another nice thing with dandelion both leaf and root is because it supports digestion kidneys a little bit of liver health in there as well it's really good for the skin so everybody likes a herb that is going to help their skin um so drinking dandelion tea both leaf and root and you can actually drink them together which is kind of unusual most plants you wouldn't put a root and a leaf together but traditionally dandelion is often the whole plant is often used all in one um, mixture so in that case you would just I would make a decoction on the stove simmer your roots for say 10 to 15 minutes add in your leaves at the end and then you've got your drink and you could just make a big pot of it and then um, let it cool down and drink it cold as time goes on but yeah so drinking that is going to be really supportive for skin health as so well. that's dandelion you know it you maybe have hated it and I hope you love it now I hope you walk down the street and be like, ooh, what a nice dandelion. That's my goal for this kind of video. Um, yeah, it's super medicinal, it's super beneficial, it's a very safe herb, it's something that pretty much everybody can have access to or can find some, you know, make a, a pact with your neighbor that if they don't spray their dandelions, you will harvest them for them and keep them under control and then you'll have great medicine for yourself and your family. So thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, like I said, I will link the other videos in the description box down below. And um, I would love it if you subscribe I'm gonna keep to this coming channel. out with videos on sustainable and easy to access herbal medicines that everybody can get their hands on and learn how to use. Um, that's it, I think. Yeah, have a great day, guys. Take care.